All-inclusive resorts come with many haters. What's a hater? And also with many loyal fans. So if you're debating whether you should book an all-inclusive resort, this is the video for you. I am going to give you an overview of what to expect at an all-inclusive resort as well as some tips, some positives and negatives, and some things you should pack with you the next time you make a trip. My focus will be on all-inclusive resorts in Mexico and the Caribbean. What to expect at an all-inclusive resort. When you first arrive at an all-inclusive, expect to get a warm welcome. You will often be served a cocktail or cold beverage and maybe a refreshing washcloth will be provided. Hopefully your bags will be loaded up and taken to your room ahead of time and you will then need to spend a little time at the front desk checking in. Expert tip, if you plan on arriving before check-in, usually around 3 p.m., make sure you have a swimsuit and sunblock somewhere easily accessible, like a small backpack. This way you can change in the bathroom and jump into the pool even before your room is ready. Once check-in is completed, you will be given a room key, sometimes that will be embedded into your wristband, and you will be escorted to your room. The staff may offer you a tour of the resort, but now you are free to go and do whatever you want. Eat, drink, swim, sleep, do whatever you want to do. I'm a, I'm a free spirit. Now, what does an all-inclusive include? The all-inclusive resort price tag often includes the room, all meals and snacks, alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages, and non-motorized water sports. They include access to the beach and pools, the water park if they have one, and the gym and other sports facilities. The daytime and nighttime entertainment is also part of the deal. Some resorts will even include premium liquor, Wi-Fi, and kids or teens clubs. So then what is not included? Most all-inclusive resorts will not cover spa treatments, excursions, motorized water sports, snorkeling and scuba, golf, airport transfers, exclusive cabanas on the beach, and the little things that add up like tips, sunscreen, and bug spray. After getting to your room, one of the first things you should do is to make reservations. Let's make a reservation. At most all-inclusive resorts, there are restaurants that require reservations. Some will let you do this before you arrive and some will require you to be at the resort. The same goes for spa treatments and excursions. Try to get these things scheduled and out of the way before all of your times get booked. Please note that some restaurants have a dress code. For most restaurants, it's pretty casual. As long as you are dry and covered up, you will be fine. Often the restaurants that require reservations are the same ones with the stricter dress codes. So look at those ahead of time. The next thing you should do is find out the schedule for the resort. This can usually be found in your room or downloaded on an app. Restaurant and entertainment times will be part of your day-to-day -day planning. Daily beach and pool activities should also be listed. Knowing what times the pools, the bars, and the restaurants close will prevent wasted time and energy. It may take a day or two to settle into the flow and vibe of the resort. Put out the vibe. With that, there are some tips that will make your trip go more smoothly. Number one is to do your research. All-inclusive resorts have a lot in common, but they differ in many ways. You have to know what the all-inclusive resort you are looking at will cover and what they won't cover. The list of included and not included services I mentioned earlier are not set in stone. Premium liquor might be covered at one resort and not at another. There might be an upcharge for certain menu items at some resorts. Some resorts will include transportation to and from the airport and some will not. Some will cover child care and some will not. Do your homework and get what is covered in writing. Also, part of your research should be finding out the style of the all-inclusive resort. The resort could be focused on families with kids, it could be focused on adults only, or couples, or singles, and everything in between. The vibe at the resort could be very quiet, or it might be spring break party all the time. There are even some resorts that have two different sections at the same resort, an adults only side and a family side. It is important for your enjoyment and the other guests at the resort that you match the resort style with your situation. The last thing in regards to research is that you need to know what your top priorities are. Are you more beach focused or more pool focused? Some all-inclusives sit on pristine beaches and some sit on really bad beaches. Some resorts have 10 small pools and some have one really large pool. Do you want a resort that is secluded or do you want one that is within easy walking distance to off-site shopping and entertainment? What about the layout of the room? For example, some guests are disappointed when they show up to their room and there is no balcony. How far is the drive from the airport? 
Do you want to spend half of your day making stops from resort to resort, or do you want to get private transportation to get you there quicker? You will get way more enjoyment out of your all-inclusive resort if you take some time to research these things before you go. The next tip is don't expect the food and drinks to be the best you have ever had. The food has come a long way in recent years, but you get what you pay for. If you went the budget route with your all-inclusive, then probably don't expect a gourmet meal. You get a wide variety of food choices at all-inclusives, but it's rarely authentic, and they are usually an Americanized or international version of the food. The same is true for alcohol. Don't expect to get a high ratio of alcohol put into your drinks. The number one complaint from travelers going to all-inclusives is that the drinks are watered down. If you can order a drink that the bartender has to make special, you can sometimes get a better drink. If you order something that is made in mass, like pina coladas or margaritas, there is a good chance that they will be watered down. Which brings me to the third tip. Seek out traditional food and experiences off the property to immerse yourself in the local culture. If you go to an all-inclusive and you stay at the resort the entire time, you aren't gonna experience the local culture. All-inclusives are very insulated which is what makes them so convenient, but you might as well be in the country that you came from that somehow magically transported itself to a slice of beach in another country. That being said, you paid a lot of money to go to an all-inclusive. It's perfectly acceptable to want to relax, stay where you are, and enjoy the perks and amenities it offers. Although my suggestion is, it might be worth it to get off the property for at least half a day. The fourth tip, have a good time with the staff. Don't be afraid to interact with them and ask them questions. Compliment their service, start a conversation, make them laugh. They can give you so much information about the culture, about the resort, about the best food and drinks. These people can become like family to repeat guests. My family is still Facebook friends with a worker named Taniko at Beaches, Turks and Caicos from five years ago. Our kids absolutely loved him and he went the extra mile for our family to enjoy our vacation. Don't treat these people like servants. Give them respect and it will be returned to you tenfold. Which brings me to the fifth tip, tipping. Tipping is a personal choice and some resorts actually request that you don't tip. When it comes to tipping, there are many opinions and many beliefs. Some people will tip mostly because they feel like they are helping out another human being and some people will only tip if the service exceeded their expectations. Tip as you see fit. If there's something about it that makes you uncomfortable or the service was horrible, then don't tip. Unfortunately, regardless of your views about tipping, most of these people aren't paid very much. So if they go above and beyond, then tip them whatever you can. I have put together a tipping guide to give you a starting point for tipping at all-inclusive resorts. Just send me an email and I will get that to you if you are interested. No matter what inclusive resort you go to, there are a couple of things you should make sure to pack with you so that your trip is more enjoyable. I have affiliate links in the description for all of these items, which means if you click on the links, it will not cost you a penny, but you would be supporting this channel so I can keep making videos like this in the future. The first thing you need to pack for an all-inclusive is sun protection. You will pay well over $25 for sunscreen at the gift shop. So make sure to pack twice as much as you think you need, including lip balm with at least 30 SPF. It would also be a good idea to get a rash guard shirt which is perfect for an extra layer of protection from the sun. The second thing you need to pack is a Yeti tumbler, 20 ounce or 30 ounce, and get one with a straw. Your drinks will stay colder longer, and by having a bigger cup, you won't have to make so many trips back to the bar. The third thing that you need to pack are water shoes. Shoes that you can wear around the pool and beach that dry quickly and provide traction and also protect your toes and feet. You are probably gonna be doing a lot of walking, so I would suggest high quality water shoes like Keen's. They are easy to slip on, they are very durable, and they are the highest of quality. The fourth thing you need to bring with you is a waterproof phone pouch. For $10, you can get a two-pack, and then you will have something to keep your phone, room key, and some extra $1 bills with you while you're at the pool and beach. Down below, I provided links to these four items and a couple of more items that I would highly recommend you look at before you go on your trip. Thank you for supporting this channel, and here's the next video you should watch.